Beyonce on the party tapes. Also was just recently contacted by someone who wanted me to essentially represent them in the sale of one of the Diddy tapes. A very reliable source just told me who's on the Diddy tapes. The streets have been buzzing, but no one anticipated this. 50 Cent just released some tapes that made Rick Ross appear to be on the verge of losing it. This isn't your typical hip hop feud, and we have the whole story on how these leaked records regarding Ross and did he access the internet. If so, you'll see why Ross is prepared to burn after hearing what's on there. This chess move was a famous blunder that affected the entire business down to the 1950s. For her to come in, what's that white, white boy, the Jimmy boy? Oh. He's a real country music artist. Darius Rucker left Pootie and the Blowfish, tried his hand at black music over a hidden beach, but his real heart and soul was country music. And guess what? Darius Rucker became a country superstar album after album after album. How many country albums are we going to get from Beyonce? And, you know, some are saying that, um, you know, there are some people who are saying that, like you said, the album was not that great. It wasn't real country music and it has nothing to do with Beyonce being black because you have K. Michelle, who is conquering the country lane. I mean, she's doing what she's doing. And I, I give it to her, at least she's willing to pay her dues. But see, that's the problem with people like Beyonce. They don't feel like they gotta still pay their dues. They don't feel like they gotta still earn anything. They feel like they can just pay a bunch of, kick a bunch of money out and, and get a bunch of minions to do whatever they want and it's all just supposed to go their way. I mean, why don't nobody believe Jason Lee? Hmm. Too much entitlement and now with richard lawson her ex stepdaddy and um oh, crikey i'm so sorry i have to take me you've been calling i i was gonna call you today i'm live on the blue couch right now can i can i call you right back are you are you home okay well we need to talk immediately okay do you want to say hi to everybody? All right, hold on a second. I'm going to put the camera on. You guys want to say hi to a friend of mine? Let's do it. You got to you gotta answer it, Meech. Okay, I'm answering. This is the father of the man yeah. who played Tupac, Demetrius Ship Sr. What's up, bro? Tupac's producer. K Dot's producer. Uh, what's up, what's up? Wait a minute. We were just talking about this whole Super Bowl Jay Z thing and people being up in arms, considering that you're actually one of Kendrick's mentoring producers and one of his greatest producers. Do you got something to tell us about it? Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's chess, not checkers. That's what I got to say. Uh huh. It's chess, not checkers. It's hip hop. This brother's on the field to identify with the culture, so why would it be anything else? That part. It's predominantly us, so, you know, let us enjoy ourselves where we want to. We can't feel that everybody can please everybody all the time. And what do you think about Jay Z making the choice and upsetting everybody in Louisiana and hip hop, apparently? Yeah, right. Well, that's, that comes with the gig. You know, uh, I guess I understand it. More so in the there was nothing wrong with the choice. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the choice. But, but the timing. Just, yeah, exactly. You know, it's just, I don't know, people are real sensitive these days. And, and you know, the comment section is, is the, is the whining section, you know, <laughs> the section. We didn't grow up with venting sections. You, you know, you, you chopped it up and moved down. You know, you kept pushing, you feel me? Yeah. Do you guys have anything you want to ask Meech before I shut this down so we can get back to work? Look, Meech, we're going we gonna to definitely get you on this couch so we can go through all this stuff that we need to talk to you about, bro. We're going to, we, we, we definitely want to see you there. We're going to see the you couch on The couch is blue. Right. You know, Crips. Crips heavy. <laughs> all right, brother. I'm going to call you when I finish up. 
When Ross first showed up at 50 with that officer Ricky Mess back in 2009, everyone assumed it was just another rat beef. But 50 had much bigger plans. You see, while Ross was out there thinking he had won their little back and forth, 50 was moving quietly like a snake in the grass, gathering receipts and forming relationships every time Ross posted something boasting about his Wingstop money or his car collection. 50 would simply observe and wait. He was accumulating firepower in the manner that 50 had planned this takedown and was no longer reacting to the small jabs. Pure evil genius he waited until Ross was tweeting about his most recent business misventures and advertising his new Checkers franchise partnerships on social media. If you were watching 50's Instagram the week before, you could see that he was setting everything up. He began posting cryptic messages about how some people aren't whoop they pretend to be. And then he threw up that post saying tick 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 ticks running out for some folks. No one knew what he was talking about but the streets were watching, and then on a typical Tuesday afternoon when everyone was just going about their daily lives, 50 hits the gram with that first take. There is no build-up, just complete destruction. He didn't even add a caption, he let the footage speak for itself. Within minutes, the entire industry was exploding. I want to come to, okay? So, you know, let's just start to get our groove on a little bit, then an hour we put the kids away, it's all good. Alright, DJ, let's hit it, let's do it. Hmm. He said, put the kids away. I mean, the, get ready to put the kids away. Because when y'all get older, this is going to be something y'all going to want to come to. Hmm. <laughs> Child, you see how Diddy is talking about putting the kids away and the real party begins after that? Word on the street is that most of the time, Beyonce and Jay-Z were left behind for the real party, if you know what I mean. Beyonce, she, she, uh, I was at a party at Diddy Crib in, in LA. This was, uh, the baby. this was, this was the beginning of, of 2020. You know what I mean? Uh, Diddy had, he had put everybody else out the crib, like the, the influx of people he had put them out. But he had he had uh he had took a, a liking to me in particular around the time, man. It was really, you know what I mean, like putting his arm around me. Right. So he had put majority of the people out, but he allowed me to stay in there. Mm -hmm. Me and you know, maybe about maybe about fifteen others, you know. Right. Jay-Z and Beyonce being, you know, two of the other 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 fifteen people in the room. So that that'll just put into perspective of the type of company I was in. Right. Um, guess what? Queen hmm. B was allegedly also in those tapes that were recovered in Diddy's mansions. But hold on, there's more to this Beyonce story. So Jay-Z was allegedly spotted meeting up with a criminal attorney and a divorce attorney. Now the criminal attorney may be because he has possibly been implicated in the crimes that Diddy is being charged with. And the divorce attorney, well honey, it looks like y'all were right once again. Jay-Z and Beyonce are allegedly heading for a divorce, baby. You know, a lot of people were saying, sorry, that's my garage, if y'all can hear it. A lot of people, you know, you tell you that their their marriage is trans, like, you know, it's a fake marriage. And I feel like maybe with everything coming out, they're like, well, I guess we ain't got to fake it no more. <laughs> that, I don't know. The reaction started pouring in immediately. You had industry executives calling emergency meetings, PR teams scrambling to get ahead of the story, and everybody who ever worked with Ross. Or did he suddenly go in ghost? This wasn't like when rappers drop diss tracks or expose old DMS. This was level of calculating that went into this 50 had literally been watching and waiting for years to catch Ross at his highest point. Just to bring him down lower than ever what made it even crazier was how Ross ain't even know what hit him at first word, is he was in the middle of a business meeting. When his phone started blowing up his team trying to reach him everybody, sending him the video and he thinking it's just another 50 cent joke but when he finally saw what 50 actually leaked baby that's when everything changed and listen if you thought that first tape was bad the street saying 50 got way more where that came from he'd been sitting on this stuff for years just waiting for the perfect moment to release it the way he orchestrated this whole thing it's like he wrote a whole revenge movie and made ross the star without him even knowing it but what ross didn't know was that first tape was just the beginning the real question everybody was asking what else did 50 have in his vault cause if he waited 14 years to drop this bomb Ain't no telling what other footage he'd been holding on to. You ever heard the term that uh, there's no worse vengeance than a woman jaded? Yes, I have. Yep. Jaguar Wright that wrote songs for Al Green, man. She didn't wrote songs for some of the biggest stars that exist. But since she wasn't partaking some of the nonsense, 
a lot of hit records got taken from her and given to other people. She didn't get song credits or song her publishing and royalties for that. So she out for Avengers, bro. Like, and she not no lady you can just run over, bro. Like she has send it up with you. Like, I just seen her outside of the event. They wouldn't let her in. She's sending it up with men, like fearless. So I'm not shocked. You feel me? Like I know I can't verify everything she be saying. But, bro, she didn't wrote songs. She got song credits for writing for Al Green. Take me through them not wanting to let her in the club. She showed up to a place. Some of the people in there was loyal to some of the people she was speaking out about. They wouldn't let her in. And she wasn't going for that. <laughs> she started setting it up. She started bugging up on the guys. They had to call the police on old girl. <laughs> oh, bro. Jaguar Wright get wild, bro. And Man. if something happened to her, I just want to tell Jaguar Wright, be careful. She just went on Pierce Morgan. Beyonce and Jay-Z sent Pierce Morgan a cease and desist. Made, made Pierce Morgan publicly apologize. Today, it's about to get dangerous for a lot of people. So if you out here doing what you're doing, because y'all not me. So you better be on your P's and Q's. It's about to get ugly. This is when people start to turn up dead right now. So keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm like the book of Eli with this shit. Because I'm the boogeyman for real. Me, do God, turn up God, the boogeyman for real to these mother, these people everybody worships. So like, that's why ain't nobody trying to speak what I'm saying. Because cause they know, like, I'm not these people. Like, it's going to be repercussions for all parties involved, for sure. I've been saying it for years, bro. I've been saying it for years, man. Recall all those occasions. The reason these tapes are so explosive is because Ross vowed repeatedly that he never did business with specific individuals. The receipts don't lie, and 50 had Ross caught in 4,000 doing precisely what he had been denied for years. The worst part is that there is audio of Ross discussing deals that happened behind closed doors and that he has been denying for years in one clip. 50 dropped a pics Ross in some truly compromising situations with Diddy, and we're not talking about innocent business meetings. We see Ross at private parties acting amiably with people he claimed he had never even met. Ross is openly boasting about how he made these unique deals with up-and-coming musicians. His casual tone and manner of speaking about it led some to believe that this was not a one-time incident, and industry veterans who saw the footage said it was the kind of thing that could permanently disqualify someone from the music industry. The way these records relate to them is what's truly shaking everyone. We see Ross becoming very comfortable with some characters he swore he never dealt with and discussing business moves he claimed never happened in these videos, which paint a completely different picture of Ross's early days in the industry. You know, all those stories about how he really got his start that Ross has been denying. So one of the things Jaguar Wright said, she said, for years I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters. Wright said on Uncensored. She further alleged that Jay-Z and Beyonce had hundreds of victims. So those are some pretty crazy allegations because, you know, we really don't have any evidence against Jay-Z or Beyonce or anything like that. So she said they monsters? Yes. With hundreds of victims. So let me say this, bro. I'm a monster, bro. Like, they just pervert. I'm a monster, though. So, like, all of that type of stuff, I can't really... Like, I only speak on the things I know I can verify as facts. Like, when it comes to them having hundreds of victims and stuff like that, I can't confirm none of that, point blank period. I can only confirm what I speak on. But like calling them type of people monsters is kind of disrespectful to me and the guys, bro. Like, Cause we real monsters, bro. Like, they just horny with money, bro. And then at the same time, bro, I'm the person who be standing in front of the people dressing room. I watch men and women throw they self at these people. 
I have watched people, I'm like, ladies who I respected. I watch them throw themselves at these people. Dudes. I'm like, damn, bro. You like your cakes touched? <laughs> oh, fold now. Let me go ahead and evacuate. <laughs> you feel me? This is this is what's going on. Like, so like I'm not finna sit here and say Jay-Z, Beyonce, Marcus, but there are a lot of people coming out saying, like, yeah, these people like to partake in. <laughs> Zesomania. <laughs> ah! Shout out to the real boys who really get it in. The guys who really stand on business. Oh no. All this, this is lame, really. Them not no monsters. We some real monsters. Bro. The industry's internal responses have been frantic. Another source close to Ross's label claimed that they had to call emergency meetings because no one knew how many more bombs 50 was about to drop. This isn't your typical rap feud where someone exposes an old DMS or drops a disc track these tapes made Ross and Diddy look really suspicious, especially with all the other allegations circulating lately. The timing couldn't be worse either, as Ross was trying to grow his business empire and was dealing with his own drama. One executive, who wished to remain anonymous because they still had vested in the outcome, said that watching these tapes was like seeing someone's entire career flash before their eyes. Ross is concerned about how these videos might impact everything he created, including the Wingstop franchises and the new Checker contract, all of which are under the partnership's California brand. When corporate America learned that you were involved in something like this, they became extremely anxious about having their name next to yours. However, the real tension came from knowing that 50 had more footage and that every time Ross tried to deny something or explain it away, 50 would respond with another clip that made Ross look even worse. It was as if 50 had cameras following Ross for years, waiting for the right opportunity to start dropping bombs. When Ross learned what was actually on the tapes, things became heated because it's one thing to hear people discussing what they witnessed, but it's quite another to know that there is video evidence that demonstrates just what you have been trying to keep quiet. Hey, and Nicki Minaj is also out here doing what other celebrities are afraid of doing and calling out Jay-Z for being involved with Diddy. We are going to be needing a fan right now, um, because even I can't stand all this heat. Okay, one thing I know is that Jay-Z has been doing his best to avoid Diddy since the lawsuits started trickling in. I mean, he even canceled his Grammy brunch party because of Diddy, because he did not know how to uninvite Diddy to the party and because he couldn't just tell it to his face and decided to cancel the party. Well, now people are saying that there's no way Beyonce and her husband could be close friends with someone for two decades, be business partners, attend their parties, know their family, have countless business ties, vacation together multiple times, knowing all their kids and not be complicit or at least mildly aware of their illegal extracurricular activities. Are Beyonce and Jay-Z staying silent about Diddy because everyone knows they're too close and knee deep with him to pretend they don't know about his other illegal actions. Did they participate in illegal extracurricular activities with Diddy? Well, insiders have been saying that Diddy has no intention of going down alone and he has allegedly started snitching. And based hey. on reports, the next person we expect to follow suit is Jay-Z. What I know is that even before Diddy's cases were made public, there were interviews behind the scenes for about a year. And I was just about to say it. Jaguar said that Diddy, in that other video I did, she said, uh, um, uh, did he better start snitching? He better start, cause. <laughs> oh man, 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 man! It is all coming out. This is hilarious, hilarious, man. Because she been right though this whole time. Mm mm mm. Things that were made public were not even half of what happened. In Cassie's case particularly, Jay-Z and Beyonce were allegedly mentioned in the original lawsuit. The thing is, Cassie's lawsuit was initially 60 pages, but it was narrowed down to 35 pages. And if we already find the things in the 35 pages horrific, imagine what else was in there that had to be edited out. Clearly what they edited out was worse than what was left in the lawsuit. And apparently in the lawsuit, Cassie also mentioned Jay-Z and Beyonce by talking about something that went down at one of Diddy's parties. Reportedly, what happened at the party was that after Beyonce and Jay-Z witnessed Diddy strike Cassie across the face, Cassie fled upstairs and locked herself in one of the bedrooms. Then Diddy's security tracked her down and Cassie took 30 minutes or more to get herself together. Then once mm. Cassie was on her way returning to the party, Beyonce and Jessica Alba were waiting in the foyer of the house to check on her. Cassie said that Beyonce was visibly upset and as Diddy and Jay were walking towards them, Beyonce blew a gasket and screamed at Diddy, telling him that what he did was highly offensive and unacceptable. Apparently, Diddy got on his 
knees and apologized to Cassie, Beyonce, and Jessica. Based on reports, Beyonce was super mad at Jay-Z, and she asked him why he was comforting Diddy instead of checking him. Mm. And she reportedly even told Jay that she was starting to lose respect for him. Then after that incident, Beyonce, Cassie, Jessica, and about 20 to 25 people left the party after witnessing what happened or hearing about it. Apparently, allegedly, Cassie left with Jessica and her people because she knew that if she left with Beyonce, Diddy would track her down because of the connections he had with Jay-Z. Cassie was also contacted the next day by law enforcement after the cops showed up to the house the same night after neighbors called and reported that there was chaos in the neighborhood. Someone from the party had called the police anonymously and reported what happened because Diddy was allegedly questioned about laying his hands on Cassie, but he denied everything and Cassie refused to cooperate or corroborate what was reported. Now, this particular party may not have been a freak-off party, but I have seen threads saying that most of the freak-off parties took place after the public parties. And Diddy himself suggested this in this video that has been making rounds. Kids have like an hour left. So get extra comfortable, kids, because after that, y'all got to go. It's a wrap for y'all, because this thing turns into something that when y'all get older, y'all don't want to come to. Okay? So, you know, let's just start to get our groove on a little bit. Then an hour, we put the kids away. It's all good. All right, DJ, let's hit it. Let's do it. So, so where, the, where the hell are the kids going? Just to another section of the house or something? Or whatever the hell they at? You know, like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. He just put the kids with a damn nanny as they go and do their damn whatever they... This is wild and crazy, man. Told you, man, these videos resurfacing. Nobody was prepared for what they saw when the notifications began flooding everyone's phones at a pace. Ross wasn't just angry he was going so far as to cause senior public relations professionals to contact one another as if someone needed to stop him before he ruined everything. Ross's initial response went viral on Instagram, a 15-minute tirade full of accusations and threats that left his own team reeling. He wasn't even attempting to deny what was on the tapes instead, he was outright threatening the lives of 50 people. His pacing back and forth in the video which looked like he hadn't slept in days left everyone wondering if he had finally lost it. First he began sending voice messages to everyone who shared the video, threatening lawsuits, making wild accusations, and even bringing up old information that nobody was supposed to be aware of. His team was attempting to control the damage, but Ross wasn't listening to any of that. He was live at AM calling out names, exposing industry secrets, and making threats that couldn't be undone. His Puerto Rico team was sending out statements to try to clean up the mess when Ross started dropping addresses not just 50 well-known locations, but also places where his family was, but Ross would immediately get back online and work all their working hours. Even his closest business partners were phoning to beg him to log off before he destroyed every bridge he had ever built. So last night we went live to give you your Diddy update. So last night we went live to give you your Diddy update. So if you've been missing out on any of the Diddy news, there were quite a few revelations last night, including one of the accusers being called out by one of her possible witnesses of basically making up the claims and offering him $3 million. Also, Diddy is trying to get bail a third time. So we talked about that and so much more. But one of the other stories that we talked about last night was that Beyonce and Jay-Z attorneys reached out to Pierce Morgan's show, Pierce Morgan Uncensored, and said that the things that Jaguar Wright said in his, his conversation with her were completely untrue and false and demanded an apology. And he had to remove Jaguar, Jaguar Wright's claims of calling them They're a nasty little couple into nasty things. So our friends over at Deadline write this, Pierce Morgan has apologized after platforming totally false claims against Beyonce and Jay-Z on his YouTube channel. Morgan interviewed Jaguar Wright about Sean Diddy Combs' arrest on, uncensored show, on his Uncensored show last week. During the exchange, a singer called Diddy and Jay-Z, quote, monsters, and alleged that Jay-Z and Beyonce have hundreds of victims. So during an uncensored episode yesterday, Pierce Morgan opened the show by revealing that he had received a legal letter from the couple in which they refuted the allegations. The former CNN anchor apologized and said Wright's interview was edited to remove her claims. Last week, I interviewed Jaguar Wright, a singer-songwriter who's made claims about Diddy for years. 
Those claims had already received a lot of attention in the media across many platforms for many years. And that's the thing about platforms. The reality of the modern world is that pretty much everyone has a platform as long as they have something to say that other people want to hear. That's why we invited her on to be interviewed. The people making these claims have an audience with or without shows like mine. Well, Jay, you were right, unexpectedly made several serious allegations about Jay-Z and Beyonce during that interview. As I said in the moment, they were not present to respond or defend themselves, but now they have. Their lawyers contacted us to say that those claims were totally false and have no basis in fact, and we've therefore complied with the legal request to cut them from the original interview. Editing, in editing interviews is not something we do lightly at a show called Uncensored. Uh, but, like the proverbial cries of fire in a crowded theater, there are legal limits on us too. And we apologize to Jay-Z. As soon as the desperate move began, Ross's team attempted to have the tapes removed using copyright claims, but 50 had already distributed them all over the place. Ross then began offering money to anyone who could help him find the person who had been recording. He was flinging numbers that made people's eyes pop, and by the time the sun rose, they were talking about millions of dollars. Despite having his account blocked three times and breaking about six Instagram restrictions, Ross continued creating new burner accounts and increasing the number of them. The industry began to split into teens when Ross began bringing other artists' names into it. As he was, exposing everyone's business, including those who hadn't paid for verses, were lying about their streaming numbers, had secret deals they didn't want public, and had others jumping in with 50 and adding their own stories. Others were attempting to defend Ross, arguing that 50 went too far, but Ross's actions made it extremely difficult for anyone to stand with him. Reckless was threatening to pull out of deals with each post. His lawyers weren't stopping and Ross wouldn't stop. California people were forced to choose a side when someone began threatening families and disclosing everyone's secrets, and everyone was going to be shocked by the baby's side. He issues that, that apology, and a lot of people are saying, why exactly is Jay-Z and Beyonce even responding? Jaguar Wright has been making these claims about them for years. Well, one of the things that I mentioned to you guys, and I've been mentioning even before this apology was issued, was the fact that Jay-Z and Beyonce do not want to put a spotlight on Jaguar Wright. We've seen this in other celebrity legal cases where if, if a celebrity decides to sue or put a spotlight on a person, it makes the person become a household name. It makes other media outlets like Deadline talk about a Jaguar Wright. But not only that, Shout out to our friend Freddie from Reality Diamond. He dropped us some tea reminding us that Pierce Morgan has a contract with News UK. What is News UK? Well, News UK is owned by Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch, as you know, is a billionaire. The billionaire that oversees networks like Fox News. He's worth $20.5 billion. So it should be noted that News UK owns 50% of Pierce Morgan's YouTube channel, which has over 3.3 million subscribers. Even if you didn't know this element of News UK being owned by Rupert Murdoch, who has a larger conglomerate, just the fact that Pierce Morgan has this huge platform should be enough for us to, to note. Because even in the moment when Pierce heard what Jaguar had to say, he was already sort of backpedaling on, on her claims. But now when you add the element of, well, 50% of this, not only are we talking about Pierce Morgan, who's a millionaire, we're talking about a billionaire that's backing this person. But in my research in regards to this, apparently Pierce Morgan signed a three-year contract with News UK. Because originally his show was on a, a television network. He decided to take it off, the, off of television and move it to YouTube. There was an article back in Variety talking about this, that Pierce Morgan announced his uncensored show is moving from talk TV to YouTube, citing, quote, unnecessary straitjacket of TV schedules. In an interview with The Times, Morgan said that he will now focus on growing the uncensored YouTube channel, which has over, at the time, 2.3 million subscribers. He says, it's clear there's a huge global demand for the content we're making, but the commitment to a daily show at a fixed schedule with all the editing and time sensitivities that involves has been an increasingly unnecessary straitjacket. But here's the thing, 
in following this story and just sort of following the money when you think about this you think about this you know how they say real friends show up when you in trouble well the way these artists was picking sides had everybody's jaw on the floor because some of ross's closest day ones was suddenly acting like they ain't never met him while folks nobody expected was riding hard for him the divide hit different when meek mill who used to be signed to ross's mg label started liking all of 50s posts about the situation that's when people realized this wasn't just about picking teams no more this was about survival you had artists quietly unfollowing ross removing their collapse their streaming playlists and some even cancelling scheduled studio sessions the real gag was. Seen who jumped on 50 side quick DJ Cullet who built his whole career on We the Best and Loyalty suddenly went ghost mode when reporters started asking about Ross meanwhile French Montana who everybody thought would stick with Ross started posting these subliminal messages about karma and living. Your truth the streets noticed real quick how them Syro deals and Diddy Connect had everybody moving scary then you got the new generation taking sides to future dropped a story with him bumping 50's many men right when all this was popping off and everybody knew what that meant even Drake who usually stays out this type of mess posted this cryptic caption about your real day ones never switch up when it's cloudy nobody knew if he was supporting or shading ross but that post alone had the industry chattering for days he signed a three-year deal with news uk back in 2021 so if you do the math his contract should be up for negotiation if he hasn't signed one already and three years later so he doesn't want to lose rupert murdoch's backing Yes, he already has built a, a huge YouTube channel, but he doesn't want to lose that support or that relationship. So as for a lot of people have always said, well, if Jaguar Wright is lying, why hasn't any celebrity sued her? First of all, we talked about this before with other attorneys. They do not want the discovery. They don't want any of their other, other business coming up in, in court or in the public. They also, or what are they suing for? What exactly are they going to get from suing Jaguar Wright? She doesn't have millions of dollars. It's honestly a waste of time. And the only person that benefits from a Beyonce and Jay-Z suing a Jaguar Wright would be Jaguar. Because now all of these other media outlets and platforms are going to be like, who is this woman that Beyonce and Jay-Z are suing? However, when Jaguar Wright was invited to a platform that is owned by another billionaire that has a stake in this show, Beyonce and Jay-Z felt forced to actually refute these claims. And Pierce Morgan did not wait to make sure that he refuted the claims and cover himself because if he's in the middle of negotiating his next contract, he doesn't want something like this to hurt that. Guys, as always, I want to know your reaction as to why Beyonce and Jay-Z finally decided to speak out against Jaguar Wright's claims of them being They're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. The tension became so great that some studios in Miami and New York began refusing to book certain artists together out of concern about what might pop off. This was just one example of how deeply this divide went. The festival lineup began switching artists who were supposed to perform on the same day as Ross because of scheduling conflicts. The label executives were not playing either source, claiming that meetings were being cancelled left and right, especially anything involving both camps. Artists who were cool with both sides suddenly had to choose California. Promoters were frantically trying to keep certain camps apart, and some venues even doubled their security budget in case something went wrong. However, the most outrageous aspect of this feud was how it revealed who was actually in charge of the industry behind the scenes. Some of the biggest names in hip-hop were forced to choose teams, and their decisions weren't always made out of friendship rather, they were made out of business, survival, and knowing which way the wind was blowing. Just when everyone thought they knew where everyone stood, 50 began hinting at more tapes dropping, and that's when you really saw who was loyal and who was just playing both sides' calls with more explosive content. Supposedly on the way, nobody wanted to be cut standing next to Ross if another bomb was about to drop, and look how that turned out. Okay, y'all have probably seen how she has been exposing Jay-Z and Tidal for scamming her and trying to silence her with a million dollars. Oniko was setting the record straight about her part in Jay-Z's sale of his music streaming service, Tidal, claiming both he and Steve Stout are spreading lies. Now there's been a little bit of back and forth, but now Nikki is saying that Jay-Z is pushing heat her way to try and keep people from talking about him and Diddy. 
Like she literally wrote on X, they got to keep the conversation on me so that no one asks about these charges against their BFF. I mean, it seems the 30 year old T here is far from stale. Patterns, yet sass, ugly, alien, stout, etc. All talking about Onika. Why are they talking about Onika? In another tweet, Nikki also questioned if Steve and Jay-Z knew about what was going on in Hollywood and whether they participated as she wrote. Dear short and stout D.I.K. Laffy Taffy Alien, D.I.K. Breath, S.A.S. We want to know if you were present during bleep of teenagers and children. That's what we want to know. Stop. Aaliyah, Foxy, etc. During R. Kelly video shoots and stuff. Did you know about Kim Porter and Cassie? Y'all seem to always run in the sort of rat pad. So that's what we the people want you and your peeps to speak on. Ugly bald head bowling ball bit. You ninjas don't have this energy for gangsters in person. Only for bees on the internet. She also wrote in yet another tweet referencing her husband worried about the tea of a 15 year old child who was railroaded but no comments on the tea and baby oil that's been going on for decades and as recent as months ago. If 15 year olds need to be held accountable and told they can't ever move past their past then what about the 30 year olds sat by and was silent etc. Oh right not the baby oil Nikki. OMG hilarious. Damn Onika is both. The barbs better protect her because Nikki is coming a little too close y'all. Hey. A little too close. Anywho when it comes to Jay-Z and Beyonce people are insisting that it's been common knowledge throughout the whole entire music industry that Diddy was that, doing man. what he was doing and Jay-Z and Beyonce definitely knew too. So they either chose to sacrifice basic morals for Diddy's money and influence or they were somewhat involved in the schemes themselves. Followers are saying that at the very least Beyonce could have distanced herself from Diddy. Never been seen with him or avoided his parties but she didn't. Well now we have reports claiming that Beyonce was actually in the tapes. And with everything going on, she's allegedly also gearing up to make her split from Jay-Z public. Who knows? Maybe this divorce may actually be the Pandora box we have all been waiting for when it comes to Jay-Z. Allegedly, this split has a lot to do with Diddy, but I guess we are just gonna have to wait for more details. Meanwhile, I would love to know your thoughts on a few things. Do you think Jay-Z will be caught up in Diddy's case? Do you believe Beyonce and Jay-Z were complicit in Diddy's crimes? And what are your thoughts on Jay-Z and Beyonce heading for a separate let me know in the comments section below. Um, boy, if the only way Jay Z won't or will not be mentioned again is if Diddy don't make it. And I feel like they may be trying any and everything possible. Because you think Diddy had connections? Boy, Jay-Z, man. I mean, this dude worked with the NFL. He, it, hey. They're right. That Pandora box. This, this could be a lot. Because I feel like if, if Beyonce try to distance herself from Jay-Z... Then she might start talking. Mm, 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 mm. Or is it, you know, unless she was somewhat involved, then they just gonna be pointing the finger. You were there too. No, you did. I saw you too. You, you know. Wee. Mm, 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 mm. We were all too busy dancing to the music. Listen, what began as just another chapter in the 50th, an art saga has evolved into something that will fundamentally alter the way the entire industry functions going forward. No one will be using their phones at private events, and everyone will be watching what they say in studios and at their casual get-togethers, which are now held on the streets. Everyone is terrified of dying because if he could sit on those tapes for 14 years waiting for the right moment, just think of what else he has in that vault. This whole situation taught everyone that in this digital age, your past can come back to haunt you when you least expect it. The game has changed and no one is moving the same. The question isn't even about Ross and Diddy anymore, it's about who will be next.